Indian Institute of Crop Processing Technology. Thank you. The National Land Protection Alliance. Thank you. Indian and Australian government that supports Indian researchers to collaborate with Australian partners on leading edge science and technology in order to contribute to India's economic, social and environmental well-being. The theme of this meet is ensuring good security, handling science to protect our grain harvest from insect threats. The main purpose of this meet is to have introduction and collaboration between industrialists, institutes and various grown great storage organizations and to avoid post harvest losses. So we hope you prepare yourself to be challenged, excited and inspired. I hope this event will proceed smoothly and bring a grand success. Also, I wish this event will help to fetch the gold and everyone will be benefited by gaining knowledge. Now, I would like to call upon Dr. M. Loganathan, Associate Professor, IICPT, to give the welcome address. I suspect a dignity on the stage, participants from various uh, organizations and research issues, IATVT faculty, students, and good morning to all. A lot of you know that India is producing more than 170 million tons of grain every year and feeding more than 100 crores of people. What is happening immediately after? Produced by the farmers, the government is protruding from the farmers and the, uh, with a um, uh, support price. The farmers are getting support price from the government. Government is protruding the paddy from the paddy and the feed from the farmers and they are processing into product that is rice, or as wheat and they are distributing to the con consumers through public distribution system on a subsidized price. That is some almost one or two rupees. So what is happening immediately after purging from the farmers to the one organization that is Food Corporation of India is storing in the large quantities and maintaining the proper stock to feed our people. So FCE is a big organization, one of the big organizations and having the large quantities of grain load the from uh, Delhi headquarters, he is a general manager quality control on behalf of IATPT, I invited Give for this function to make it successful. Welcome, sir. <laughs> sir, another guest, uh, Tamil region, Food Corporation of India, Chennai, um, Sri Tom B. Tomari Kennan, is also with us to uh, make this function successful. I welcome you, sir. Once the grain is stored in the grounds, so we have the back storage system, so there are possibilities of insects and fungal infections. Infection. So what, what we are doing is our scientists and a lot of students are doing research to prevent the grains from the fungal infection and also from the insects. So we have one person who is uh, spending his lifetime to trap the insects and uh, we got the name Trap Mohan. So now he's the dean, the school of postgraduate studies, dean of you. So on behalf of IACPT, I welcome you, sir. So we have the guests from the Australia. Uh, two guests we have. The one is uh, Dr. Jimmy Walter from University of Queensland. I welcome you, sir. Another guest. Dr. Pat Colin, he is from the Department of um, Fisheries, Environment and Forestry, uh, Government of Queensland, Australia. So they are the they are the initiators of this Indian National Grain Production Alliance. So they have the buffer system in Australia 
They have the good collaboration between producers, industry, and also French tourist organizations. So they are sharing and interacting each and every point, and they are keeping the grain in good quality. So they gave the idea to start the alliance gear. So we started here. So initiation is important, but at the same same time creating is very very. Various parts of our stakes and also FCA personnel and TNCC personnel, technical people here, and my dear student friend, and all the staff of my sister institute. Why we call a sister institute? You know, brother brother always fight with me. Is a brother brother there will be fighting. I mean, sister means that there is close association. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. Even if you see the sister, we do something, uh, we forget it. And so that is why we generally we people call sister. So I love this institute very much and students. Because when I came morning, all students were saying, Good morning, sir, like people do in my institute. At least I feel I am uh, PTD. <laughs> they will do because everybody was telling good morning. I was so happy because I am uh, close to you. I am known to you, or close to you. So that way I am very happy to be here. I don't want to take much time because I have some presentation later on. It is an insect day. You know, coffee day. <laughs> it is an insect day. <laughs> insect also came as food day in China. So that is also good day, insect day. Here we have assembled not to take insect as food day, but we have to manage insects. We forget everything as my colleagues and people. So we forget all, only say, and we will be happy today. First, before, we must be happy before going to control management. So when mind is happy, mind is free only, then we will control. We will spray too properly. Otherwise, we will spray that. Because people I have seen mosquito, we have to spray on the cesspit and cesspool. Generally, people visit, say, you are a municipal corporation, people visit, they spray on the cesspools. We have to do target the area. So, for that, everybody should be happy. Law, we are in good to the cabin. First, Nana, Kibbutz, Tata, Jikalaya, so you are happy, you know. I have responsibility to create a happy environment. That's my idea. So, we will discuss. Plenty. Insects are problem. Insects are going to problem. We need not worry. We can control it easily. Mm -hmm. Why join together? FCI join together. CWC and all the various organizations join together. That is easy. Many times it does not happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many times it does not happen. So it should happen from our director of the director in sports. It should happen. We should all unite, unite all the organizations in one umbrella, then only these insects will fly from this continent to <laughs> Otherwise, it will be from FCI to CWC, CWC to ENCC, ENCC to uh, uh, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University. It will be flying and over it should. Like it, uh, we take training no? in different institutes. <coughs> like that, they will train in FCA and come to us. So they will visit. <laughs> then, and that, they will also visit the households. <laughs> then, the press people are very good story for us. So, like, because there are a lot of television nowadays. Democracy is uh, growing now, very good. Television, play a role, TV. Unlike paper, now TV, every day, everybody is there, 20, 30 channels. They don't have news. So the storage insect has become a very good news for them. How you see science develops? So there is no job for these 25, 30 channels. Of course, the election comes with three months job only. <laughs> In formation of ministry, they will not come to insect. Whether insect eats us, nobody bothers. <laughs> three months, they will be there with the whole camera, with the political people. You are the prime minister. He is the prime minister. All the prime. Then after formation, everything will stop. Then they will come to Insects. <laughs> so don't have job. At least we are very happy that they are coming to store the product insects. That is a problem in FCI storage good on. That way we are one. This is the first step. This science has one in this country. Because I am here in this science 31 years. Tired was sick. I never get tired in working for this insect. Because I love it. I love it. I am not saying, I don't have that trick. 
International conference to be held in November at Tor Pori conference. I received immediately by track author. He is the looking up for that great abstract comment. I told only this. All we have developed the tools. Everything country America has developed, Australia has developed, India has developed, 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 published, published, published. But unless it goes to the traders here. Goes to the FCA, goes to the TNCC. TNC, what is the use of this type of meat? So we are going to start at beginning. Already we have started. This is another new chapter from the soil of Tanjavu, where in the Australian uh, uh, friends here, our scientists. So we all join together and we will find some solution, permanent solution, not a temporary solution like all will do, all are doing, we will find a permanent solution. So this grand alliance is a good term, you see, it attracted me very much alliance, alliance excellent. So we will all unite and we will see that we take good grains, good rice, good wheat without insect. With this, I wish you all this. I will also participate in this. We grant aliens to come up like a rising sun and occupy the entire body. Thank you very much. I express my good morning to everybody. And I express my thanks to the director having given me the opportunity to come on here. So, FTA being the biggest organization is very good today. It will be very useful to us to use their expertise to control the risk management and storage of trade as to give a video system effectively so that uh, millions of people get registered at the week without any problems. So we will be discussing uh, many of the problems we face. My colleague officers will be sharing the, the news what we face in such management and storage problems, where this institute can come and help us to work on those problems. So I wish uh, the scientists, the best scholars, can share their expertise, how they can help the FCI to come over of the problem faced by us in perspiration and storage of grains. And the students who participate in this function, this workshop, will get benefit out of it. Thank you very much. My colleague of will give you a sharing of what is the problem in this. I like the problem. Thank you very much. A question of India, New Delhi, to felicitate the chief guest address. I respected Dr. Mohan, Dr. Lokanajan, Dr. Alex Sundar, Dr. Ali, my colleagues, Mr. Pam Bekhanai, Dr. Chandrasekhar, and Jimmy and Pat from Australia, dear friends. Good morning to all of you. It is indeed a matter of privilege for FCI uh, to associate uh, with this mega project, which is uh, uh, of very great significance to us. Just before this session, we were uh, having a, I was having a discussion with uh, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar about uh, uh, the need of creating an alliance uh, against the insight. Uh, Dr. Mohan, uh, in his very entertaining uh, way, has been talking about the need to uh, what you call throw out the insect from in the continent. I don't know whether they will go to some other continent from here or. Uh, 
whatever it is the uh, once we define the role uh, once we once we define the agenda what we are supposed to do then there will always be a way to do it and uh, uh, hearing from dr mohan that he has been working in this area for last 31 years i think <coughs> the time has come for all to support him and to achieve his goal actually uh, we got involved in this uh, project i would say by chance it was like uh, one suggestion came from uh, uh, the new site that um, they are taking up this study so they sought uh, the assistance of the association of uh, cwc and sci in this project so we thought this is what we were looking for basically uh, there was a mention about uh, in the welcome speech uh, dr logan was talking about uh, the grain storage and problem at one point of time not very long back just two years back we had a situation we were storing 80 million tons of grain at one particular point of time 80 million tons it was a herculean task to preserve that Uh, fortunately now it has come down now we are around 15 so 50 we feel very comfortable because we have handled the pressure of 80 so the uh, whatever be the efforts we make it is it's a very difficult job and not only that not only from an sa perspective even from a general perspective uh, going by the studies in this area The, it is estimated that anywhere up to 30 percentage of the grain produced is wasted due to the non-availability of proper post-harvesting technologies, whether for processing or for storage. So, uh, a grain lost. I mean, this is something which is unacceptable for a country like India, especially at a time where I can uh, say with some pride that uh, we are now giving competition to countries like Australia in the international market for wheat. India has become the largest exporter of rice during this last year, and wheat also we are a very prominent player now. So there is a market to be tapped even outside the country, and other side we are wasting our grain. One side we are not able to. I mean, uh, from SA side I can say that we have been able to achieve uh, food security to the extent that at least we are making sure that everywhere the grain reaches. Of course there are problems in the system, but at least we are making sure that everywhere the grain reaches. But still, there is the potential uh, to feed our own people better, or to tap the international market. And other side, we are wasting the grain. So the it is the need of the hour. This alliance is the need of the hour. Traditionally, it is said that there is always a disconnect between the industry or the user and the academia. Like academy works in its own silo, and we work in our own silo. We don't talk to each other. So what we require. the academic the academy will not understand what they develop we will not understand so uh, only through this kind of partnerships and joint ventures we can bridge that gap and uh, whatever research is happening whatever research is going into this area will be of actual use and uh, the objective of the the purpose of the research will be fully achieved uh, there was a mention about this um, um, Pattern of storage, meaning a bulk storage facility is not. This also I would like to share. Like uh, we are in the process of slowly shifting to the bulk storage uh, systems because of the cost and other factors. There are a lot of limitations. Recently, uh, we have come up with a tender for construction of two million tons of silos in the country. It will be opened in the next month. So uh, we are expecting that in the next two years, two million tons of wheat silos. now there is an issue of rice silos that is another area where uh, as of now there is there is i would say lack of clarity on whether rice can be stored in silos if it can be stored up to what capacity how the moisture control will be done like how the temperature controlling what level it has to be maintained lot of issues are there so this is an area where i think we can work together Because what happens is like uh, wheat. Even though rice is a staple diet for us in India, wheat of course we produce. But uh, more than that, our problem main storage point of view main problems are there in rice. So we will be very much interested. Uh, at least wheat, we have a solution. Silo is solution. Is there only it's a matter of money and resources? But uh, rice, we are really looking for a solution. Can it be done? There have been some uh, 
somebody had approached us that it's possible, so I would like to, we would like to take it further from that point. So, um, from all angles, in natural, what I wanted to say is that there's a lot of things can be done, a lot of untapped potential is there, a lot of areas to work together. And uh, this beginning, uh, let it be a, the just a beginning of the next big thing. Uh, instantly, I would say in 65, it, SA was started from this place, Sanjavur. Yes, sir. Virudhanaga. And now we are in the 50th year. We are celebrating our 50th year. So I am happy that again one more beginning is happening from Sanjavur. And let it take us to the next level of 50th year. Once again, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. The chief guest of the morning, Mr. Rajay Kopal, quality control manager, New Delhi, India. And uh, beginning to be good friend nowadays, Mr. Tom Rekhan, the general manager of Food Corporation of India, Tamil Nadu, and a member of, new member of the board of the government of IACPC. I have been inviting him many times to come and visit IACPC. And suddenly today morning he appeared in my room. <laughs> I was really surprised to see you today Sunday morning. It's very, very good to have you here with us. And I will be very glad to show to both of you the facilities we have this year, as well as in our functions is over. And uh, Dr. Morgan told a long, long term time frame and very enthusiastic speaker, enthusiastic researcher, and a big killer of insects. Millions <laughs> <laughs> and millions of insects. Billions of insects. He says he does, he's every, 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 everybody happy, but he kills all the insects all the time. But he doesn't kill though, he eliminates insects. Is that what you do, Dr. Mohan? He's a vegetarian, so he doesn't eat <laughs> I have been knowing Dr. Mohan for what? He's 31 years, entomology, 30 years we know each other also. So he's a wonderful, one of the best scientists that we have around us in India, particularly in Tamil Nadu University University. And my colleague, Dr. Lohanadan, who, who has done the whole thing to make the event happen today morning. I appreciate the effort he has taken individually to make this platform happen today morning. And that Dr. Alice, who is a senior entomologist in the Disseminala Institute. And Pat Collins from Australia. And Jimmy. Jimmy or Jimmy is a question always here. <laughs> Jimmy is not so good for this thing. Jimmy is not a Jimmy is a good Jimmy is a slang they use for Jimmy in America. Give me a Jimmy order, give me a So, Dr. Chandrasekharan, the PA of this project, and Dr. Kumar, and my dear colleagues from my CPT and the participants from FC and PSC, there are 30 people. And then uh, FCI and CWC and Rice Millers from Kong AM, they are all our good friends, and few other Rice Millers from, I think, Puduvayan Rice Miller is also there. Some of them are coming, actually. In India, they get up a bit too late, I think. And then my dear students of IACPT, my colleagues, you know, teachers, and then students of IACPT, good morning to all of you. Um, uh, I thought we were very late for the morning. It was 10 o'clock, we started at 10 30. Then I thought it is going to take a long, long time. Then I found that everybody is running on the top. Very quickly, 10 30, we started only 11 10, everybody is finished. I am the only man left. Maybe I should pull it a little bit longer so the whole thing can go for another five, ten minutes, basically. And Mr. Rajagopalan has pointed out a lot of wonderful things in his talk, particularly. Uh, during his talk, he mentioned that they are going for the bulk storage facility. And they already have, I think, 4.5 lakh tons of bulk storage facility on build, operate, and own type of uh, thing. And Adani has been given this facility, I think. Two the data I saw was 4.5 lakhs, whatever it is. I don't know, there are several facilities I think you have around. And one of the facilities I saw with my colleagues a couple of uh, months ago in Coimbatore. I went to see Coimbatore and it was a very nice facility, very beautifully maintained, very clean and good. And I was surprised to see such a very clean, clean facility maintained in India. And very large two bins were there and then. I don't know, so much of instrumentation, so much of equipments were there. Uh, if, if it all required, I don't know why so much, but uh, I have been working, uh, Dr. Mogan is 35 years, I have been working on this subject for more than a quarter century, 25 years. Either I have been working on the subject as, as a scientist, or I have been reading the subject. Whenever I read the subject, as he loves insects, I love grain storage silos. So I, whenever I see something, I just read about it. So therefore, that is the background with which I come. 
so Adani was very wonderful, and they say the last such in Adani is very little compared with the back storage. So, and then I'm very surprised that you are now um, advertising for two more million tons of grain storage in the bulk. There was a lot, lot of concrete silos in the country. I don't know if they are all used now. No. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, in modern, this institute was started in modern rice mill complex, uh, Modern rice mill complex had concrete grounds. I think the American will know it. Concrete silos, actually. They built it and it never was used. It never was used, I think, what Dr. Morgan will appreciate, it never was used because it was not done scientifically. If you go to see that, if somebody can go and see that today, they will, they will really understand. There was no opening for any aeration in that place at all. There is a small, tiny outlet opening and a very large concrete construction with thick walls. So once you put the grain, it will basically cook inside. That's the way the whole thing was built. This institute was started in 1967 with the motive of handling high moisture grain. High moisture grain, it is a problem in the country, in, in particularly in the Delta region, because the monsoon rain coincides with the harvest season. During harvest season, there is no sunlight. And uh, high moisture grain comes in. It is a political influence, political problem. Incidentally, I was going to call initially some press people. It was running in my mind. Then later on, I decided not to call the press because certain things we want to discuss. It is interrogation. You are the, you are the industry, we are the academia, as you said. We don't coordinate. We don't coordinate because we don't talk our problems openly. Maybe I thought I should use this platform to tell certain things which I feel for reading, for doing 25 years. 25 years of this, about 80 years in Canada and about 13 years in India. It's a, it's a long, long experience on the subject, actually. And then the high moisture comes in, high moisture is taken to the go down. Next door is PNC as we go down. The next day, in the, in the harvest season, whenever I come in the morning, I see a lot of lorries standing on the roads. All these lorries will be smoking a lot of heat outside. In the morning, you will see the smokes coming over the lorries. And then all the high moisture grain comes in and then goes into the storage go down and then put it in the go down for a day, for a two days. And they say, I, I always question, where is this high moisture? Is it not going to spoil? There were political issues in it. There were ministers that questioned on it, actually. And I don't know how they handle the high moisture paddy, and then they say immediately it is sent for parboiling. If you send the high moisture paddy for parboiling, two days, three days before you find a mill, before you send it, first you unload it here, then reload it on the lorry, then send it to the power of boiling unit. It all takes two days, minimum three days time. During this process, the whole thing goes. So it is a problem. High moisture paddy is a problem. We have not maintained the quality of our food grain. And I'm sure wheat must be doing good. Paddy is not at the moment doing good, is my, my estimation. I will tell you, it was in 1992, on a nice, nice, nice winter day, I was sitting in my office back in Canada. At that time, one of my professors, his name was Dr. Jim, Jim Thompson. He came to me at about 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning. He told the uh, did you read the newspaper? I said, I didn't read the newspaper because we didn't have time. Then he said, uh, you know India has imported uh, wheat from Canada. I said, well, yeah, India may import wheat from Canada and the Canada may import uh, cotton from India. So these things are bilateral things. Why should I know about it on everyday basis? Then he said, wait, 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 I will go and bring the paper. He's a very serious professor, actually, almost retired. I was, his, I was his student at that time. Then he brought the newspaper. The newspaper was Global Money. And in the newspaper, it was written that India has imported, it was 92, I'm talking, 22 years ago. India has imported 4.5 lakh tons of, uh, 450,000 tons of uh, wheat from uh, Canada, feed grade wheat from Canada. And then the article goes and says, this feed grade wheat is given to the people as food in that country. And then he said, uh, he asked me, Alubu, why are you? Don't read your own qualities. Why should you feed the feed grade wheat to the people? Feed means it is fed to the animals. And it is fed to the human being. Why do you do this? It's a problem. Have we improved upon our system? Have we changed the quality? There was a shortage of rice in the early 1970s when I was a boy. In those days, the rice was not in the open market, believe me. Rice was bought. Mostly, everybody need to, needed to buy from the ration shops only for some time. For a few months, it was a big trouble. At that time, when we buy the rice from these rice mill, uh, fair price shops, 
the rays brought one or two days, it was smelling. We are interrogating, so I can tell smelling very bad. And we, we, we have not, 1970 was there, 20 years later, 1992, grade, which is important given to the people. Now, 2014, have we improved upon our drain storage system? Are there improvements? Bag and bulk. I'm very impressed that Mr. Rajagopal and Tonsa are going for bulk storage. Bag and bulk storage system, we always have been discussing which one to go with. Bag or bulk. Always it has been proven, all countries that have been using bulk storage systems, mainly those are the countries in the Eastern Europe, those are the countries in America, those are the countries in Australia, those are the places in Australia, New Zealand, Japan, these are all developed nations that have been using bulk storage system for whatever reason it is, maybe it is affordable. All those countries have proven throughout that the losses to the grain when it is stored bulk is very little or nil. All countries like India, like Africa, like all developing nations or our underdeveloped nations which select to store the grain in bags have lost sufficiently. As he rightly told, in many countries it is 10 to 30 percent. India is much better, about 10 percent, lower end of the higher loss. Why should we go for bag storage facilities at all? If you have seen things that they want to shift to bulk storage facility, we are here. We are here, I am here, Mohan is here, Dower Institute is here, TNA, so many of us have ideas and technologies to give it to you. It is all perfected. He was asking whether we don't know paddy and rice. Paddy is different show, rice is different show. When you put it in put paddy, then you have to mill it up. Then when you mill it up, you don't want any breakage to occur on it. Rice, somebody was talking yesterday that as you keep loading the rice, the rice at the bottom is getting crushed. We really have to see that, but definitely, Southern America is producing a lot of rice. Louisiana State University dryer is the only dryer available to us. I'll come back to that in a minute. Southern America is producing a lot of rice and they are storing rice in bulk. I'm sure it is very safe. There is no back storage facility anywhere in the world outside the developing nations or the underdeveloped nations. So bulk storage facilities have proven to be very successful for many reasons. Number one is handling is very easy as he told. Number two is surface area to the volume is very little in a bulk storage system. So the effect of environmental conditions on the bulk storage system is much less. Cleaning things are very easy and most of all, fumigation is very excellently, very just like that. I was telling Mr. Kamari and Mr. Rajagopal in the morning when they were in my room 10 years ago or 10, 12 years ago when I was a researcher. I'm no more a researcher actually, more of an administrator now. And many times I feel sorry for myself. Not <laughs> <laughs> so when I was doing the 10 years ago, CWC called me in Trichirapalli uh, Gudown. They told me that I have been working on carbon dioxide related storage systems all the time. They told me to connect, help them conduct some experiments for carbon dioxide, the effectiveness of carbon dioxide on controlling insects in the good old direct. We did, we did for small bulks of some, some hundred, hundred bags or so. And it was very tedious. You have to tape and all that and then do this and then inject the carbon dioxide and see. It was a very tough job for three months. Some of we had to um, withdraw from that project because the man who was interested in doing it was retired uh, at that time. So many friends, the point I like to mention here is that bulk storage is, has always proven to be successful in many countries. One thing we have to see is that India is tropical, particularly southern India is tropical. In a tropical weather condition, all these silos are going to heat up very heavily. If this heat is going to affect the grain or not, we have to see all that technology. And as he said, wheat technology is perfected very nicely. And when we talk about, I was talking about the high moisture grain. High moisture grain, our, our uh, Dr. Singar Vadival is sitting here. Since the inception, almost near the inception, he has been a scientist in this institute for 37 years, right? 37 years he has been working for this institute. And he knows they have developed some technologies in which they put salt and, and, and husk and then mix with the rice, it will pull out the water from it. But that's a small scale treatment. But what we need is uh, lakhs of tons of rice coming at the same time. We need to provide them the dryer. <coughs> I always talk to my friends in ICAR, we have failed to provide dryers for the farmers. Unless you provide a dryer for the farmer, the whole chain is in trouble. 
he cannot drive when he cannot drive he forces the government to buy that high moisture paddy and the government buys a high moisture paddy they don't know what to do with it it is a problem they will appreciate what i am talking about and then this high moisture paddy becomes mold attack then black rain then bad smell everything develops from there basically even now only the luciana state university dryer is the only form of dryer used in this country that to buy by big rice millers like this kangayam and puduvai rice millers it makes us today morning so therefore the dryer development of a dryer is the need of the hour for the grain storage post harvest management of grain first important second important thing is they are now looking at 2 million tons and in the next 10 years when india takes up something it takes very aggressively believe me to australian gentlemen sitting here when we start doing we are very slow we sleep when we start waking up we start up, up, applying some something we go very fast actually the 2 million tons will become 100 million tons in the next 15 years time i assure you but the point is Rice coming all the way along it back, or wheat coming all the way along it back, and finally reaching a two million ton storage goodon in bulk is a problem. And I'm sure you, your your people must be thinking about it. What is the way that we can make the farmer store the grain in bulk? That is another important research area that we need to address. And when we go around, I will show you just in the side right side to, to my right uh, to your to our right side. we have created some 5 tons 7 tons 10 tons storage silos small tiny silos these silos are built to see pulse particularly in this case we are we're looking at pulse and even our secretary has told all of you to try it paddy pulse and paddy to put the pulse and paddy inside the godown and then see inside those silos and then see what happens to them during a very hot summer time winter time so over a period of time and see the management the result of that research will eventually help we have lot of silos in lot of villages so you know the white revolution came up white revolution is the milk revolution it came up in this country because every single village or every single town started having a milk chilling facility school the milk storage facility so similarly this bulk storage silos must be provided to all the villages in this country some day So once it started bulk, I call it bulk chain. It has to start from the village, and it has to move up to the two million tons capacity. And yet another problem that I see in the storage system, Dr. Morgan will appreciate, or Dr. Tom, Mr. Tomarekar will appreciate me, is the fumigation. Fumigation has been an issue. Always it has been an issue. As I told, the bad storage facilities have always proven to be very ineffective in controlling. Uh, in, in, in maintaining a good fumigation concentration in it, and when we talk about the fumigation, what sort of fumigants are going to be used? According to the Montreal Protocol, we are left with no other fumigant at the moment except the uh, phosphine. Am I right? It is phosphine. Only phosphine is allowed to use after 2015. Methyl bromide is allowed, very little, and they have to eliminate. See, you see, the Montreal Protocol is signed in 1989. the objective of montreal protocol was to to protect the ozone layer the ozone layer is depleting because the um, chlorine and bromine based cfcs when they come into the atmosphere they go back to ozone so they want to control all the uses of cfcs or so in this process all the insecticides will get eliminated so we will be left with nothing very soon we will be left with nothing so alternative methods need to be explored what are the alternative methods left with us we have initiated mr tamri mr sajagopal is going to address talk to his boss he will be back very soon alternatives uh, you know i was i was in a conference in turkey in 2012 i'll talk about that when he also arrives back in his seat they were talking about lot of alternative methods of fumigant One of the most most successful alternative fumigant is carbon dioxide fumigation. And on top of the carbon dioxide fumigation, now they are using what is that? The minachi? What is that called? Eco to fume. They say eco to fume. The industry people sitting here will have to know about it. Eco to fume. Eco to fume means it is two percent carbon dioxide phosphine and ninety eight percent carbon dioxide. Putting two percent phosphine and ninety-eight percent carbon dioxide, they found in killing the insects very effectively. 
When you put the carbon di carbon dioxide, insects start inhaling very fast. So when they start inhaling very fast, consumption of phosphine becomes very fast also. The killing rate becomes very quick. And also, where eco 2 fume cannot be used, they also recommend sulfuric fluoride. Sulfuric fluoride is a fluoride-based compound. A fluoride-based compound is safe for environment. This is permitted. I'm not sure if sulfuric fluoride is used in India. But we are using methyl bromide, we are using, using malathion, we are using DDVP, which are all are harmful for the applicator, which are all harmful for the user, which are all harmful for the environment, which are all harmful for the green itself. So therefore FCA must think, FCA must interest certain things to us. So we also conduct the applicability of eco to fuel or applicability of sulfur and fluoride on controlling insects. The resistances or the one of the objectives of this project is resistances developed by the insects. A lot of insects are developing a lot of resistances. Unless you apply them very effectively, lethally, anything less than the perfect lethality is going to allow the insects to develop resistance. Once you put it on the full lethal dose, they will quickly die and go ahead. But we often fail to maintain the lethality. When it may fail to maintain the lethality, they will continue to survive through. So therefore, resistance is developed by all the insects. You know, for example, I want to mention here, in 1989, it was 25 years ago, Brian Mulroney was the Prime Minister of Canada at that time. Canadian and Australian weeds are called, uh, perhaps he was telling that India is competing very equally now, are considered a very good wheat, number one wheat. Canada claims always we have number one wheat. You give me premium price, I will sell my wheat. Canadian wheat is number one wheat for many reasons. Number one, maybe the gluten pattern of the wheat is better. It is good for making bakery products. Maybe, I don't know whatever it is. I'm an engineer actually, so I don't know the chemistry of it. Well, another reason that they claim their wheat is the number one wheat because Canada claims whatever you import from Canada, there will not be a single live insect in our grain. Zero tolerance. In 1989, there are a lot of countries, rich countries want to buy this wheat, paying premium price and then import to the country and give it to them. But we import feed grade wheat dough. Japan imported one million ton of wheat from Canada and the wheat goes from, from Prince Rupert port to, to Canada, wherever it was. And then they were unloading. During the unloading, they take the samples. And in one of the samples, they found one rusty grain beetle crawling on it. One single, single insect was crawling on it. The whole wheat was put back into the ship and then sent back to Canada. One million ton, the whole thing, like onion was disturbing the Vajpayee's government in India. His one million ton was disturbing Brian Madhuri's government. Almost going to be, everybody was asking him to resign. What can, what can he do when the wheat board in Canada was doing a mistake for him? It was due to the resistance, number one, it was due to the non-application of insecticide on the transport. So it develops. You know, my dear friends, all of you are more experienced in the industry than we are. We are only talking very theory, but you are practical. This X and other things come as a package along with the, with the grain, so they will hatch and then they will come out with the insect very soon. So during the transport process, it hatched and became insect. It became a big issue. So therefore, these issues are uh, very important that we need to address them. We need to take lessons from other countries. We need to take the technology as is from other countries and time test them in India and apply directly. A lot of Indian weather conditions are very good already, equivalent to the European weather conditions. And maybe southern India is a bit hotter, then we have to seek the technology being used in southern USA. Then maybe use that directly like here. Or uh, FCA may start, FCA should have, always I used to think FCA should have some research component in their total budget, which is very large. Our, our secretary used to say, there was a discussion going on about 44 crores. 44 crore was then the question for a budget estimate. And our secretary was simply telling 44 crores, it is only like one train load of grain. Why are you talking so much about it? <laughs> you guys are filled with a lot of tons of money. So therefore, you should start giving us some money for this. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah. For information of the house, I must mention that uh, last month we signed MOU in the presence of the CMD. Mr. Rajagopalan from uh, FCA and uh, Dr. Tingaravadi from IET Petty were the key persons initiating the whole thing. Actually, we will be conducting the milling trials, milling outturn trials in 11 states of India uh, for 88 trials in 88 rice mills. Tamil Nadu is one of them. I am asking Mr. Rajagopalan to start at Tanjavur so we can also put our people to learn about. He is a big expert, a catch hold of Dr. Tingaravadi. So th that is one of the, the project cost is about 93 lakhs, but it's small, too small for you. <laughs> we are in fact ready to go for bulk storage research very much. I have been shouting on it for since I returned to India in 1995. Wherever, wherever an opportunity comes, I talk about it. But so far I was a simple researcher, now I am a director, so I can talk in a better forum than earlier. So therefore shifting to bulk storage will be a very great solution for this country. And cooperative storing is going to work or not, that's a different. There is, a, there, is, there is a group called the Controlled Atmosphere and Fumigation, Permanent Committee group. People across the world, from across the world, there are 16 scientists in that committee. I am one of them. They conduct uh, an international conference once in four years. Um, in 1992, it was conducted in, in Winnipeg, Canada, where I used to study. In 2012, it was conducted in Turkey, where I participated. In Turkey, there were Mr. Patnaik was there. Patnaik from PwC, yeah. chairman. Uh, he was there, and there were a couple of people from uh, ITC. There were 45 countries, people from 44, 45 countries, and about 450 scientists from across these 45 countries participating in it. They were all giving research results on controlled atmosphere and fumigation. Phosphine was discussed, CO2 was discussed. Sulfuryl chloride was discussed. So we go to fume, which is 2% phosphine and 98% carbon there. I was very surprised because I was a committee member, I was there in that uh, group. There was no single paper from India on that subject. Dr. Morgan, I think we should think very seriously. There was no single research happening in this country on alternative methods. We need to seek alternative methods. Very importantly, I you know when we go to when we go to for funding, there are people sitting in there, there are scientists from different fields, there are IAS officers, everybody sitting there. They all tend to think rain is very safe. Why do you want to conduct further research on rain? Why do you want me to pump 50 lakhs, one crore, two crores of money into the grain research? Because it is nothing happens to the grain. Many, many things happen to the grain. And is I am telling people who understand the problems of the grain must consider funding the research organization like ours, like PMIU, who are all aggressively working, thinking about it. The point I want to mention to the house is I bid for posting it. I have been bidding it for the last eight years. This time I was successful. So in 2016, January, tentatively we have fixed the date for 18th to 22nd January. It will happen for five days in Chennai. This will happen in Chennai. Last week I was in Chennai searching for a good hotel. Highly, highly likely ITC Chola will be the site for conducting this program. At that time I will come back to FCI for some form of collaboration. Collaboration means yeah. money. <laughs> <laughs> so, my dear colleagues, today is going to be a very eventful day. It is a lovable day, as he, as, as Morgan likes, in fact I like, right? So we all are, are, are all going to benefit out of it. Whenever such things happen, I cancel all the classes for my M second PhD students. Because what they hear from our own teachers is one side of it. They will be hearing this lecture anyway. But these type of things do not happen. So I made them all sit. In many institutions, when you go, they don't cancel the classes. They don't have authority. They just don't do it. Don't take any initiative. Dr. Moore, you should consider this. They have all their cancel, the classes are canceled and they were all forced to, they, we took attendance, otherwise somebody will escape. <laughs> So our students are going to be benefited, FCA people are going to be benefited, Pat and Dimi and Dr. Chandrasekhar, take us forward and let us know in the evening what has transpired and expired. Thank you so much. Integrated to the diet, delegates from overseas and uh, India, IACPT faculty, the Sarahs and my dear students, uh, very good morning to all. Uh, Mr. Tom, I would like to express my sincere and perform uh, uh, this FCA is considered to be the nodal uh, agency as far as India is concerned in the procurement of grain and it is uh, the, supposed to be the biggest supply chain management in Asia. And it is very proud to say that 
uh, he has also rightly pointed out that the first HCI it was started in Tanjavur. So we are going to celebrate his 50th year, really very happy. And also, I profusely thank our uh, Dean Postgraduate Studies, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, Kwanzaa Group. He's a very enthusiastic entomologist and he has created a lot of uh, facilities in the case, case of grain science. So on behalf of the director and everyone who has gathered here, I thank you, sir. And uh, I also take a particular note to thank the overseas uh, researchers for this, uh, especially Dr. Jimmy Walter from uh, uh, University of Queensland and, uh, and Dr. Pat Collins, uh, the Department of Agriculture, Fisheries and Forestry for coming over here to meet uh, this uh, and to participate and give your valuable experience to us. So on behalf of our director and also the organizers of this meet, uh, thank you sir. Uh, and uh, now I would like to thank our uh, beloved uh, director who is the man behind and he is instrumental behind the show actually. He is giving lots of input to us. Uh, since we joined the uh, English Institute uh, uh, for the past two years, uh, he is giving uh, uh, he's having uh, actually lot of expertise in the grain science. So uh, he worked in the overseas uh, more than a decade and um, you know he's an engineer, lot of uh, experiences in entomology too. So he has created a lot of facilities in our institute. So to the worst mention, uh, what's, uh, worst to mention, I can mention one or two. He has created uh, study research in bulk uh, storage. Uh, <laughs> Just then uh, again, he has also rightly pointed about uh, the alternate to fumigation. So he encouraged all the scientists, uh, especially one of our scientists, he's working on ozone fumigation. Uh, so it's a very new thing, alternative for this uh, methyl bromide. And uh, another one group, uh, the director, along with another one more scientist, uh, they are also working in CO2 as well as phosphine uh, combinations. Uh, so really, on behalf of everyone and also this uh, IMGPA uh, meet, uh, I would like to thank our director. And uh, now, uh, it is my time to thank our um, uh, Dr. Chandra Shekhar and well Dr. Mohan Kua, who is the uh, PA of this uh, uh, this uh, project, BSC project. So on behalf of everyone, I thank you, sir. And now, I would like to thank all the officials who are representing from SPI, CWC, as well as CNPP for sharing with us the, this day and also finally I would like to thank all of our students and faculty SRS for having with us today. Thank you. Uh,